God, we love you more than the time that we put into things that really don't even matter. God, we love you more than our cars. We love you more than our homes. We love you more than any material thing, oh God. Forgive us, oh God, for not giving you all of us, dear God, because you always give us all of you, dear Heavenly Father. God, we thank you once again for bringing us to your house of worship. We thank you once again, oh God, for allowing us to come into this space to be able to give you praise and honor, dear God. We thank you, oh God, for this place that we call the Emmanuel Temple. Dear God, we thank you for every person that is assembled here, dear Heavenly Father. Thank you, O oh God, for your Holy Spirit that is always moving and resting and abiding in us, dear Heavenly Father. Thank you, O oh God, for your grace and your mercy, dear God. Thank you for provision. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your still small voice that speaks to us, O oh God. Thank you for walking with us and talking with us and reminding us that we are your own, dear God. We thank you. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. We pray, oh God, that you would be in the midst of this worship experience, oh God, that you would take control. Let us get out of our own selves, dear Heavenly Father, and just completely rely and trust in you, dear God. I pray that you would bless the one that will bring forth the word, dear God. I pray that you would touch every usher. I pray that you would touch every servant leader. I pray, oh God, that you would touch the musicians, dear God. I pray, oh God, that you would touch the servant leaders that are working with our children dear God look over our children watch over our children cover them dear Heavenly Father I pray oh God that you would even be with our leaders oh God I pray oh God for protection I pray for peace for them dear Heavenly Father bless the praise team as we come forth and sing praises to your holy name oh God in your son Jesus name I pray this prayer amen
to worship. Amen. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house, Lord. I have loved thy habitation, the place where thy honor dwelleth. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. All together. O oh, sing unto the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All the earth sing praises. Amen. of blessings that's about to fall on me cause victory is here he defeat out the door God's doing a new thing get ready get ready for overflow cause I'm
Hallelujah. We're just going to pause for a second. We're going to read the scripture, but we're going to pause for a second because I don't know what's going on in this place, but there's a spirit of heaviness in here. And before we can lead into the word, before we go any further into the worship, hallelujah. If you've been waiting, you've been praying, you've been fasting for some things, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give God your praise on this morning. Give God your worship on this morning. Give God your honor on this morning. Give God what's due unto him this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We don't have to wait on the praise team to pump us up. We don't have to wait on the preacher to come and preach us up. But give God your worship on this morning. Hallelujah. God, we break up everything, 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 every spirit in this place that's not like you, oh God. God, we didn't come here to spectate, oh God. God, but we came in this place to participate in your worship today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This 11th month of the year, oh God, we are waiting. We've been waiting. We've been fasting. We've been praying, oh God. God, before 12, 31, 2019, God, we are expecting you to do some things in this place. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, oh God. If you've been waiting, you've been fasting, you've been praying for God to move in your life. So when, when they sing that song, something in you should just leap up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Something in you should just connect with those songs that they're singing. Hallelujah. If you know you've been waiting, if you know you've been praying, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Something in you should just leap up. Sunday. Something in you should just leap up. Hallelujah. You don't care who's here and who's not here. Because you know you've been waiting on some things. Glory to your name, oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. May we all please stand for the reading of the scripture. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, God. Thank you, God. God, when I come into your house, God, I want to feel your presence, oh God. Hallelujah. Glory, Jesus. Glory, God. We don't care who's here and who's not here. God, I want to feel you as long as you're here, Jesus. As long as you're here, God. As long as you're here, God. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Our scripture lesson comes from Psalm 32, verses 1 through 7. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Happy are those whose transgressions is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. While I kept silence, my body wasted away through groaning all day long. Thank you, God. Then I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not hide my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, all together. You are my hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with the glad cries of deliverance. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. And we all say thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Let the church say amen this morning. Let the church say praise the Lord. Let the church shout hallelujah this morning. It's a good day to be in the house of the Lord. And this is the first Sunday of the 11th month, November. 
God has brought us through 11 months, church. 11 months. We, we trying to cross that finish line into 2020. We got one more first Sunday to go. But God has been good to us. Are y'all glad to be in church this morning? Glad to be in the service one more time? Just give God a shout of praise and say hallelujah this morning. That's the highest praise. We just thank you, God, for just being here and allowing us to be here one more time. So we just thank you for being here. And at this time, do we have any first-time guests among us this morning? Being here in the church for the first time. If so, we ask you to stand up. Amen. The ushers will bring you a gift right now just to acknowledge your presence here today. And we ask that you just fill out the card and let us know who you are. And when our pastor is back, he will acknowledge you in a more formal way for coming. All right? Let everybody else stand up right now and let's have a time of fellowship. Go out and kiss somebody, hug somebody, shake somebody's hand. Tell them that God loves you and so do I and there's nothing you can do about it. Amen? Amen. Brothers and sisters, I want to welcome you back to life, back to the one that can make your next chapter your best chapter, hallelujah. How can it be that you love the most unlovable when I'm for our giving um, and our receiving of our tithes, our offerings, and our gifts. Amen? So we know that we pay a tithe, but we give an offering. Let me explain that. We pay a tithe, and we give an offering. The tithe is what we owe God, 10%. That's what the Word of God teaches us. And the offering comes from the overflow of generosity of our hearts to God for all that God has blessed us with. So at this time, let us take up what we're going to give in our tithe and offering and place it in our right hands and let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we just thank you for these gifts and we thank you for each giver. We ask God that you would just be a blessing to each one and that you would extend those blessings to all those who had to give and those who had not to give. And we ask that you would just use it for the upbuilding of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The ushers are coming forward and they will receive your tithe, offerings, and gifts. If you would stand up and face the outside aisles and come around, thank you.
bizarre Call me place I'm flying diseases People are slipping away Economy's down People can't get enough pay But as for me All I can say is Thank you Lord for all you've done for me Come on, y'all looking surprised. Come on, get on your feet. Folks without homes are in the streets. And the drug habits, some say they just can't be. Muggers and robbers may seem to be safe. But you've been my protection every step of the way. And I want to say thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Come on, y'all know this last part. Come on. It could have been me outdoors with no food and no clothes. All left alone. Without a friend Oh, just another number With a tragic end But you didn't see fit To let none of these things be, yeah But every day by your power You keep on, keep on keeping me And I wanna say thank you, Lord For all you've done for me Amen. Thank you, Lord, for all, hallelujah, all, not some, but all that you have done for me. Amen. Sometimes we take it for granted when we just wake up every morning. But how many of you know it's not by your own power that God has allowed you to see another day? So thank you, Lord, for all. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. As we come to our period of personal prayer, our altar call this morning. We ask that you keep several of our members in prayer. Brother Moore has lost his brother, and so we ask him for prayer for the Moore family this morning. We ask for continued prayer for the sister family of Sister Deborah Thompson, who was funeralized on yesterday, that you would continue to work out prayers for that family. And of course, we continue to pray for our pastor and our co-pastor in their travels, that God would continue to send his anointing on them as they preach and teach the word in South Africa. And so we ask that you would just pray for each and one, every one of you. Pray for the person next to you, the person in front of you, the person behind you. Because sometimes prayer is not just all about you, but we need to pray for each other. The word of God said the prayer, the righteous prayer of the saints availeth much. So let's pray for one another this morning. As you come to the altar this morning, the ushers will direct you. You can stand up and face the outside aisles and come right in the front this morning and just have your little talk with Jesus. Know all about his, your troubles. He will hear your cries and he will answer by and by. So have a little talk with Jesus this morning. Tell them all about it. Amen. Just 
wants to see you to behold you as my king for your glory I will do anything just to see you to behold want to be wherever God is and I believe that he's here right now in this place so if you've been looking you have to look no further because God is here 
You can reach out and just grab him. You can reach out and grab him. If you need peace, it is here. If you need healing, it is here. If you need to be in his presence, right now is where you need to be because God is here. God is here. God is here. And I don't want you to leave without him. God is here. God is here. God, I want to be wherever you are. Just resting in your presence. Oh, God, I want to be. I got to be. God, our Father, we just thank you for being with us this morning. We want to be where you are, and we know that you are here. So we thank you for your divine presence, for your Shekinah glory that shines right down on us today. We thank you, God, because you're such a good God. You're so much better to us than we have ever been to ourselves. And God, for this, we say thank you. We just thank you for waking us up this morning and starting us on our way. We thank you for a new day and a new opportunity just to praise you, just to worship you, just to be able to be in your presence, dear God. So we thank you for all the prayers that went up today from this altar. We ask, dear God, that you would just shine down on each and every person. You know what they stand in need of today, God. So go from heart to heart and from breast to breast, God, just acknowledging the pain and the, the suffering and, and even the joy and the glory and the thanksgiving that has gone up to you. We thank you, God, for those who are standing in bereavement this morning, that you would just soften their hearts and just send your comfort to them this morning. We pray for Brother Moore and his family. We pray for the Thompson family. We pray for all those who are suffering from bereavement this morning, dear God. I even lost a cousin on yesterday and I'm praying for that family as well, dear God, that you would just touch them in the midst of their loss. So God, we pray this morning that you would go over to South Africa and just touch our leaders, our pastor and our co-pastor. Send your anointing, your Holy Ghost spirit of anointing on their preaching and on their teaching their God that people a continent away will know who you are because of them dear God we just thank you for this preaching moment I ask that you would just hide me behind the cross and under the drippings of your blood and that your word would go forth with power this morning in Jesus name I pray and my soul says amen amen, amen. Some of you may not know because you just see preachers get up and preach and you figure that that's what they do. But I've been preaching for almost 25, 26 years and pastoring at least 18 of those years. But every time I stand up behind this sacred desk is a new opportunity to get it right or to blow it completely. So I ask God every time I get here to just be with me and to empower me and to let your word go forth with power. 
So our scripture this morning comes from the book of Judges, the 16th chapter. If we stand for the reading of God's word. One Samson went to Gaza where he saw a prostitute and went into her. The Gazites were told, Samson has come here. So they circled around and lay in wait for him all night and at the city gate. They kept quiet all night thinking, let us wait until the light of the morning, then we will kill him. But Samson lay only until midnight. Then at midnight he rose up, took hold of the doors of the city gate and the two posts and pulled them up bar and all and put them on his shoulders and carried them to the top of the hill that is in front of Hebron. After this he fell in love with a woman in the valley of Sorak whose name was Delilah. The lords of the Philistines came to her and said to her coax him and find out what makes his strength so great and how we may overpower him so that we may bind him in order to subdue him and we will each give you 1,100 pieces of silver. So Delilah said to Samson, please tell me what makes your strength so great and how you could be bound so that one could subdue you. Samson said to her, if they bind me with seven fresh bowstrings that are not dried, then I shall become weak and be like anyone else. Then the lords of the Philistines brought her seven fresh bowstrings that had not been dried and she bound him with them. While men were lying in wait in an ember chamber, she said to him, the Philistines are upon you, Samson. But he snapped the bowstrings as a strand of fiber snaps when it touches the fire. So the secret of his strength was not known. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord here in the reading of our scripture. So my title of my sermon today is Who's whispering in your ear? Who's whispering in your ear? This is the story of Delilah. We have been focusing, some of us, on some of the wicked or less notorious women of the Bible during our sister season. And here we have the story of Delilah, a temptress, a vixen, a sexual predator, a woman of the world. Samson was a judge in Israel and was blessed by God with extraordinary strength. His exploits were legendary and his fame was widespread throughout the land. Everyone always talked about Samson. He was tall, dark, and handsome. The Bible says that his hair was in seven locks. A recent TV series on the Bible on TV depicted Samson with what we call dreadlocks. And God gave Samson his extraordinary strength and Samson used it in many conflicts with the Philistines because during this period of Jewish history there were so many skirmishes between the Israelites and the Philistines. The Bible points out that although Samson was very strong, he had one distinguishable weakness. He loved foreign women. His wife was an unnamed woman. His first wife was an unnamed woman from Timna. And at their wedding festivities, a riddle contest that gave grave consequences. Furious that her countrymen had secured the answer to his riddle by threatening the bride, Samson took revenge on the local tribesmen. <coughs> Samson returned to his home alone and his bride was given to the best man. And this caused Samson to seek further revenge against the Philistines. The second woman that caused Samson's eye was a prostitute in the Philistine city of Gaza. The Philistines still mad at him from the previous wedding, got word that he was at her house and came there to capture him. But they missed him. And he escaped, taking the city gates and throwing them down and killing a crowd of hundreds. Now, brothers, I don't know why this story was included in the canon of Scripture and what is the message that God is trying to send to the brothers today that Samson's weakness was farming women. Hmm. 
He wasn't attracted to the Hebrew women of his times, those law-abiding women, those women who loved God, those women who lived according to the values of the Hebrew people. No. He loved those foreign women who worshipped strange gods, the ones with exotic looks, lots of strained makeup, flashing jewelry from head to toe, dripping in perfume. That's what he loved. And I think there's a message for some brothers today because here in the church we have some fine sisters, sisters that love the Lord. We have some sisters that are fire baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost, but just like Samson, we still have some brothers that love them foreign women. I guess I better leave that alone for now. And then Samson met his match. He met Delilah. Delilah was beautiful. She wore lots of jewels. She was bathed in scented oils. Her maids dressed her from head to toe in beautiful garments, alluring colors, and daring designs. She was probably what every man dreamed of and desired. Samson fell for her at once, and Ann Spangler in her book, The Wicked Women of the Bible, says that before they go to bed every night, Samson tells her stories, most of them about his favorite subject, himself. <laughs> himself as a child, himself as a young man, and himself as a leader in Israel. He regales her with stories of how he tore a lion apart with his bare hands and slew a thousand of the enemies with the jawbone of a donkey. But, but Delilah already knows of all his exploits. His power is what makes him so attractive to her. She likes the hardness of his muscles, the girth of his arms as they enfold her. She loves to whisper in his ear how strong he is and she tells him he is invincible. But there is also another side to Delilah. Although she is a Philistine, she knows the history of, of Israel. She knows about the promise made to Abraham and Sarah. She knows the story of Moses and the Red Sea. She knows about Deborah and Barak's victory over Sisera. And she knows that God of Israel is supposed to be so powerful and always delivers the Israelites out of their distress. But she wonders, why then is Israel so weak? Samson has confided in her that two of the 12 tribes have been fighting each other, and the other tribes are harassed by outside enemies. And she keeps plying Samson with wine and whispering in his ear how strong and brave he is. And Samson just keeps telling her all of the secrets of Israel. Brothers and sisters, there are people out there telling you how great you are, how fine you are, how powerful you are, how gorgeous you are, and how much they want to be just like you, when all they really want to do is to find the secret of your success so they can undermine you and destroy everything that you have. You have to be real careful when people are heaping praise on you. One day, when Samson is away from some Philistine rulers approach Delilah, Samson has been a thorn in their side for a long time, and they believe that they can get to him through Delilah. They know what kind of woman she is. She has this relationship with Samson, and she has him wrapped around her little finger. You know that kind of woman. She says, jump. And the man says, how high? Delilah is the kind of woman that believes she can have any man she wants. She's attracted to those big, strong men, those, those men who are public figures, those men who are famous and everyone admires. Delilah is the kind of woman who will tell you she could have your man if she wanted him. And she will threaten to take your man away because she can. That's who Delilah is. Brothers, I know you know some Delilahs. And sisters, some of you have been Delilah. Oh yeah, none, none, none of y'all have been born saved. 
Some of you had those Delilah skills and you knew how to work a brother for everything you wanted. You whispered in his ear that he was fine. You told him he was the best lover you ever had. You got your rent paid. You got your clothes bought. Your hair and nails done. And then you bragged about it to your girls that you could get anything you wanted out of this brother. Yeah, some of y'all have been Delilah. Spangler states that though power has always been Delilah's favorite aphrodisiac, and now they tempt her with something even more seductive, cold, hard cash. Enough to keep her secure for the rest of her life. So the Philistines used Delilah to find that source of Samson's strength so they could overpower him and destroy him. They bribed her with the promise of enough money to make her independently wealthy. And brothers, I, I, I don't want to be too hard on you, but sometimes it seems that any time they want to bring a powerful brother down, they send a Delilah. A ain't that the truth? A ain't that the how they, they get to him? They send some Delilah to whisper in their ear and tempt them away from what they know is right and what God has purposed for their life. So she teases Samson and she lures him with her body. He believes that her body is pure honey and gold and will do anything to possess her. Soon Delilah begins to play a game with Samson, whispering in his ear, tell me the secret of your great strength. Samson plays along with her and says that if anyone ties me with seven fresh thongs that have not been dried, I will become as weak as other men. So the Philistines give her seven fresh thongs and after she makes love to Samson and he falls asleep she ties him up with the thongs then she cries to him Samson the Philistines are upon you Samson jumps up and he snaps the seven thongs as, as though they were tiny strings and seeing that he did not become weak Delilah complains Samson you're making a fool out of me she kisses him and caresses him and then whispers in his ear Tell me the real secret of your strength. This time, Samson says, if anyone ties me with new ropes that have never been used, I will become as weak as any man. So again, the Philistines gives Delilah new ropes, which she ties him up with. And this time she screams again, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. But just like before, he snaps the ropes and breaks free. This time, she sulks and swats at him. She grabs his wrist and demands that he tell her the truth. And this time, Samson says, if you weave the seven locks of my hair into the fabric on the loom, I will become as weak as any man. So one day, as he slept, she did as he instructed. And then she yelled, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. But Samson just sits up and yanks his hair from the loom. Now Delilah is angry. And she says, how can you say you love me, yet you won't confide this one thing in me? You have certainly made a fool out of me. And it's probably at this point that she whispers in his ear that she's going to refuse to share her bed with him. Okay, we know that's the breaking point for Samson. He ain't getting what he want no more, so now he decides that he will tell her the secret of his strength. He says that no razor has ever touched my head because I have been a Nazarite dedicated to God from my birth. And if my head were shaved, my strength would leave me and I would be as weak as any other man. So as Samson sleeps with his head in her lap, a Philistine shaves all of his locks off. And again, Delilah says, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. Samson rouses himself as he does previously, but all of a sudden he realizes that his strength is gone. He has become as weak as any other man. God's anointing, which was upon his head, is now gone. God's anointing has left him, left him, left him. This familiar story, church, reminds us of the fact that there are times in our lives 
all of our lives that we allow ourselves to be lured away from God and the protection that God offers us. Perhaps if Samson wasn't so full of himself, letting the gift that God gave him go to his head, he might have seen Delilah for who she really was. But unfortunately, many of our brothers never see the Delilahs of the world coming. They're too caught up in other stuff. I'm going to leave that alone. Who's puffing you up today, church? Who's telling you that you're the greatest thing since sliced bread? Who's filling your head with fantasies and pipe dreams that only God can fulfill? Every now and then you need to do some self-evaluation to see just where you stand spiritually. Who am I listening to today? Whose voice do I hear? Who is whispering in my ear? Is it the voice of seduction or is it the voice of God? Remember, the enemy comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. The enemy <coughs> comes only to kill, steal, and destroy. And Satan was alive and well in this story. He took God's anointed Samson, servant, Samson, and used Delilah to take away the anointing that God has on his life. We all know how the story ends. The Philistines gouge out both of Samson's eyes and put him in prison and force him to grind grain. So now Samson is blind with no strength. All right? And finally, they bring him out as a spectacle to a feast to honor their god, Dagon. However, by this time, Samson's hair has begun to grow back. And his strength is slowly returning. And he asks God to remember him and to strengthen him one more time. And in the midst of this, he is able to bring down the pillars of the temple, killing thousands of Philistines and himself. Amen. The story about Samson and Delilah is a story about sexual seduction and temptation. So my question to you today, brothers and sisters, is who's whispering in your ear? Have you received the Holy Spirit and practiced hearing God's voice? Do you talk to God on a daily basis? Do you know God's voice from other voices? You know those voices, the ones that tell you, go for it. Nobody will know. The voices that say he or she is so fine, you can't pass up this chance. But believe me today, what is done in secret will always come to light. Always come to light. Jesus knows all about our temptations. When he taught his disciples to pray, he included the phrase, lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from evil. Jesus thought that was important enough when he taught us how to pray that we would continue to pray that every day. Lead me not into temptation. Why? Because the devil is busy. The devil is active. The devil is always seeking who he can kill, steal, and destroy. So you have to pray to lead you not in temptation. If you give yourself a daily diet of God's word, it will be easier for you to resist the devil and flee from him. Many times in life, the Holy Spirit will guide you and direct you away from evil if you will only listen to his voice. But thank God, church. Thank God. Trouble don't last always. Just like Samson regained his right mind and called on God for deliverance, God is always available to hear our cry. The psalmist, the psalmist says, out of the depths I cry to thee. Thank God when we cry out to God, God is always listening. He heard Samson's cry and he was able to summon all his strength and to destroy his enemies. He, sin doesn't have to be a dwelling place because God will always provide a way out for you. I don't care how down and low and dirty and shameful your life has become. If you cry out to God, even in the midst of all that struggle, God will not turn your back on you. He will still listen to you. He will still hear your cry. He will still answer. In the midst of all of these things, 
And we know that we have some Delilahs in our midst, always trying to steal and destroy and to bring people down, whispering about them, talking about them, gossiping about them, whispering in your man's ear, whispering in your ear. All of these things happen. This story of Delilah, God put it in the word for a reason, for you would understand who Delilahs are and what they're capable of. But when he heard Samson's cry at the end, Samson was able to summon all his strength strength. Sin does not have to be your dwelling place. Jesus already paid the price for your sin. The word says, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole within? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. God has paid a way for you to be able to get you out of sin. He says, oh precious is the flow that washes white as snow. No other found I know, no Nothing but the blood of Jesus. <laughs> As we come to the close of our sister season this morning, we thank you for all that have participated, all the preachers that have preached. I got up early every morning for the last month and came out to 7.30 sister service just to support my sisters. Y'all know that ain't my time of the day. But I came out every 7.30 service, and this is the last Sunday. Y'all won't see me next Sunday at 7.30. I'll be asleep. But we just thank God for this word today. And we thank God for all the sisters that preach and all the words that have gone forward in our sister season. And we look forward to next year, 2020, for sister season. Amen. So all the sisters stand up this morning. All that have participated in all the events. We went to see Harriet, the movie, on Friday night. We had a great time with that as well. And so we salute all of our sisters today. And brothers, I hope y'all got a word from that message this morning. Amen. I'm going to leave that alone. Um, if we would all stand as we have the invitation to Christian discipleship. If there's someone today who has never accepted Jesus as the Lord and Savior of their life. If there's someone this morning who has never made that their testimony. And they want to accept Jesus today. We invite you to come. That you would know him as the Lord and Savior of your life. And if there's someone who has accepted Jesus but is looking for a church home, a place to work out your soul's salvation, this is a good church. A church without any pretensions, without any phoniness, without all that stuff that some folk try to church you into believing in this church. This church don't have that. This church is for real. So we invite you this morning, if you're looking for a place to work out your soul's salvation under Pastor John White II and Reverend Maria Mallory White and all the other ministers and the congregation here, we invite you to come this morning and come and join and unite with this fellowship. Let the church say amen. As we prepare ourselves to receive Holy Communion this morning, before we go into our service for Holy Communion, we will have our offering for missions. 
and we have the ushers to come forward and to receive our offering for missions. You know, this month we are looking to feed families for Thanksgiving with Thanksgiving baskets. And who is in charge of that? Sister, Sister Tara and Sister Caitlin. Okay, so you can give your name to them. Somebody was here the morning service and they wanted to give their name. So um, you will be able to give your name to them and they will receive your donations and they have a list of what is needed for the baskets that they, they were looking for this morning, a list. Amen. Now get ready to recite our general confession. <laughs> Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men and women, we acknowledge and bewail thy manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time has grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against our divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in the newness of life, the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Broken body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I take you with thanksgiving in my heart. The shed blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I drink it. We only have two ministers today to serve everyone, so we're going to do it one section at a time, okay? So we'll start with this section that you have twist the outside aisle and come forward, and Reverend Andrea and I will serve you, and then we'll do the next section.
to recite the Apostles' Creed, which is our statement of faith and belief. The Apostles' Creed. Oh, 
Make up heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, our Son, our only Lord, who is conceived of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. In the third day he arose again from the dead, descended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Church Universal, the forgiveness of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the life selection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now let us receive our benediction. And now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his presence with exceeding joy, to the only wise God, be all honor, majesty, dominion, and power, henceforth and forevermore. Amen. Amen.